started recording. So just to let you know, we are being recorded today. Um, so my name's Lou and I'm from Food is Free. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Food is Free, but I'll talk to you a little bit about that later. So just to let you know that if you have any issues, just pop it in the chat, if the parents and carers could do that and we can address any issues that you might come up with. And if you can, if it's possible to change your children's name into the um, name down the bottom of the screen too, so we know who we're hanging out with today. And I love that someone's doing a tumble already. <laughs> That's awesome. So we actually will kick over to Moors, who's going to start things off. We're going to pay um, respect to the traditional owners of our land. On as well. So welcome everyone. We can't wait to get into some gardening adventures with you soon. Fantastic. Now, I like to use my fingers as tapping sticks. Really? I know that Abby and Bree are very good at singing this song, so they'll be singing along with us and you can join in soon. Are you ready? Let's sing a little song acknowledging the people, the traditional people of this land. Reach high, reach high and touch the sky. Stretch low, stretch low to touch the ground, the ground that we play on. Put our hands on our hearts and say thank you to the elders, past, present and future. Thank you, everybody. While I've got you all there, I'm going to sing a few songs and I think you might know some of them. And these are about creatures that are in our gardens. And there's one creature that's got eight and they like to crawl around. Does anyone know what they might be? Creeping, crawling. Let's see if we've got a song about a spider. Are you ready? Incy wincy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed poor Incy out. Out came the sunshine and dried up all the rain. So what did he do? Incy, wincy spider climbed up the spout again. Let's do that again. You ready? Incy, wincy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed poor Incy out. Out came the sunshine and dried up all the rain. So Incy Wincy Spider climbed up the spout again. Did everybody else get lots of rain on the weekend? I think there might have been a few Incy Wincy's around playing in our spouts on the weekend. Now, the next song is to get you all moving and warmed up. There's other creatures that like to scurry around our gardens and they're small and they're black and they seem to really like picnics and they're called ants. Are you ready? These ants are going marching. So see if you can get your marching arms happening. Even if you're sitting down, you can still march. Are you ready? The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching one by one. The little one stops to suck his thumb and they all go marching home to get out of the rain. They're going to tie their shoe. The ants go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching two by two, the little one stops to tie their shoe and they all go marching home to get out of the rain. The last one, three, and he stops to climb a tree. Are you ready? The ants go marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. 
The ants go marching tree by tree, hurrah, hurrah. The ants go marching tree by tree, the little one stops to climb a tree. And they all go marching home to get out of the rain. That rain seems to be hanging around a bit, doesn't it? Poor old Incy, now the ants all got to get out of the rain. Now, I know that fairly soon my friend Lou is going to be talking about some creatures that live in the garden and they love good soil and they like to wiggle. Can you do that with your fingers? What might that be? Yeah, a worm. A wiggly, wiggly worm. And I found a song just about a worm that likes to wiggle. Now, I wonder if any of you can wiggle. Who can wiggle? And another thing you can do if you're sitting down, you don't have to stand up to be able to wiggle. Oh, actually, that feels quite good. Like, up the shoulders. Oh, that's great. Let's give it a go. There's a worm at the bottom of my garden and his name is Wiggly Woo. There's a worm at the bottom of my garden and all that he can do. Are you ready to wiggle? He can wiggle all night and wiggle all day and whatever else the people wiggle. say. Wiggle. There's a worm at the bottom of my garden and his name is Wiggly Woo. There's a worm at the bottom of my garden and his name is Wiggly, Wig, Wig, Wiggly, Wig, Wig, Wiggly, Woo! Yeah. Great worms, everybody. Let's see what Lou might have over there. I've been down the bottom of the garden, gang, and guess what I found? What's here? So I've just gone to visit my worms in my worm farm this morning and there's lots and lots of wigglers here. So here's one here. Can you see him? Yeah, like Robin's worms in her worm farm. Look at that worm. So there's lots and lots of worms here. They do like to go right down to the bottom of the pile where it's nice and dark and safe. And they like lots and lots of water. So See, this one's coming to say hello to you all. Look at that. <laughs> so worms are really important for the garden. They help the soil health and make the um, plants grow, which means this one's off on an adventure. Look at him. He's really having a good time. So the worms are fantastic because they aerate and put air into the soil, which makes the food that we eat really healthy. So worms are really important for our health as much as it is for the garden and for the soil health as well. And I wonder what they actually eat. You can see here that they've done lots of um, work on all of the veggie scraps that we've put into the worm farm, things like um, eggshells, but we also put lots of shredded paper as well. Because if you put too much of the green stuff, so if you pop your veggie scraps into your worm farms, you also have to balance it out with lots of paper and cardboard as well. And they really love this one. Look at him. He's taking off. <laughs> he's a bit you know, of a speedy worm. <laughs> I know. He so wants to leave the plate. Um, but, yeah, what they do is that they hang out where it's nice and dark and safe and cold. So you have to make sure that your worm farms also have lots and lots of water. So we'll give it a little squirt to make sure they've got lots of um, water there. They actually have five hearts. So we only have one heart, but worms have five hearts, which is unbelievable, isn't it? And also they are older than the dinosaurs on the planet. They've been here for longer. So they've been here for wow. such a very long time. Um, and worms are just really, really important for the ecosystem as well. But the best thing that I love about worms is when you've got all of these veggie scraps from your kitchen, Instead of putting them in the bin, what you can do is set up a little worm farm in your house so that then they can eat all the scraps. And they're the best little recyclers on the planet. So that's why they're so good. Because when they do their poo and wee, then all of this goes into the garden, which helps the soil fertility. So it's really important to look after our worms. 
and to remember that they're always under our feet there's hundreds and millions and thousands of them under our feet at all times that we totally forget about um, so yeah make sure you look after your worms and if you want to start up your own little worm farm it's really easy you can actually just do it simply with a couple of polystyrene boxes and make sure you put some holes in the top one so they get down to the bottom level and otherwise you can go to nurseries and buy worm farms and that sort of thing so they're they're readily available and they're one of the best pets you'll ever have and they just keep having babies which is amazing so lots and lots of worm fun for everybody as long as you keep them in a nice cold um, cool spot in the shade that's all you need to do and make sure you keep up all the scraps so that they can eat and munch them away and they don't go into landfill because when it goes into landfill it produces methane gas which isn't very pleasant for the planet and not good for humans so just remember how important they are for our health and for the soil health and see if you can go out today and catch a few worms in the garden yourself yeah. and the other really important thing about nature is that uh, pollinators actually pollinate the fruit louise have you got something to tell us about bees Bees, but I, Lou, I'm fascinated because I didn't know a lot of that, like dinosaurs, wow. They're pretty Isn't old. It? Yeah, that's incredible. Did anyone else know that? Either did I. Yes, bees are great things for the garden, aren't they, Lou? They are, I love them. Yeah, and they are. They really help our garden, make it healthy. And what I've heard is they love purple flowers. So they, I have lots of lavender in my garden and it really attracts, attracts them. So they are just the most beautiful things. Buzzy, buzzy bees, are you ready? Where do you think the Davis family there, where do you think the bees? come from where do they like to hide in do you know any idea what about you abby and the henderson family where do you think they might like to be let's 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 find our little beehive here we go here is a beehive but where are the bees hiding away where nobody sees watch them come creeping where are they hiding away here we go one two Three, four, five. Oh, they're on your nose, Abby. <laughs> Here we go. We do that one more time. Here is a beehive, but where are the bees? Hiding away where nobody sees. Watch them come creeping out of their hive. One, two, three, four, five. Bzzz. Hiding away again. Have you got bees in your garden? Yeah, have you, Morza? I have got bees in my garden. And again, they love the lavender. They do. And what do what do they make? There's something very special they make. And you can take it off mute if you'd like. Oh, anyone know? Honey, I like it on my toast. What about you, Lou? I love honey too. Did you know that Food is Free has some beehives? And I actually am a beekeeper. So I look after the bees and make sure that they're healthy and happy in their hives. And they go out every single day. They leave the hive and they do a little waggle dance that tells everyone else in the hive when they come back that the bee, the honey in the pot, the pot, sorry, the pollen is over there. They do this wiggly dance and they tell each other and communicate through the waggle dance. So they're very clever. And they, they travel all along all the flowers and pollinate. And when, when they rub up against flowers, that means that the pollination um, process happens. So if we didn't have bees and if we didn't have worms, we wouldn't have food. So it's really important for our health to make sure that we look after the bees as well. And they love blue and purple flowers. You're right, Louise. They're very attracted to those. Yeah. yeah. I would be very, very sad if I had a world without food, Louise. Yeah. I would be really devastated because yeah. I love my food. Yeah. It's really important for us to keep that energy flowing. And when we have really yucky takeaway food, you'll notice that your energy kind of goes up to the roof and then all of a sudden goes down really quickly too. But if you have stuff like, you know, really healthy food, 
you'll notice that it just keeps a nice balance for the rest of the day. So we're all about um, healthy food. That's what we do at Food is Free. And we encourage each other to share our mm -hmm. food too, because sometimes when you're a gardener, you grow way too much and it's good to be able to share with others. So we encourage anyone who's able to, to share their food. Shall right. I talk to people about some recycling in the garden, Louise? Well, yes. I'll show you my little garden. Can I show you my little garden that I've made? Yes, please. And I'm hoping I might have to bring my camera over a little bit more so I hope you can see this. Let's see. Can you see that now? I think you can now. Yeah, perfect. I have found some things in my garden, so I've made my own secret little garden. You can see it there. And I've used a lot of different things, Lou and Moors. I've used some things from my garden and also some recyclable material too. So I've got my, my little spoon, wooden spoons here that I've used a little bit of craft as well. And I've used some of my leftover containers to make a little pool for my pond, my little duck, little pond for my duck. I've used some of the flowers that I've had in my garden. I found some pebbles for my little stepping stones to my little house. And I've created my own little garden here. So I love lavender and really good because when you make something like this, it can be a real sensory garden where you can smell and touch and feel. So I've got some lavender. I've also, you might know what this is. I've also got some rosemary. Love rosemary in, my, in some of my food I cook. I've got some basil. That's my boy's favourite when they make their pizzas. And I've got some chives. So I've got lots of little things in my garden, but I thought I would show you that because that is something that you might be able to do too. Make your own secret garden. What about you, Lua Moores? What's in your garden? I've got lots of different things in my gardens that I use a lot of recycling with. But I think Lou's going to show us some bits about recycling too. I am. I was just thinking, Louise, that would be the perfect wet weather activity, wouldn't it, to create yeah. your own little ecosystem in your own house when you can't go outside because of the rain. Absolutely, Lou. Great well, idea. I'm about to have a little gather of what actually was happening in my garden. So I'll just show you a few little things here and then I'll talk to you about how easy it is to garden for free and through recycling because we're really, you know, recycling is great because we help the planet's health. So we're looking after our own health and we're looking after the health of the planet. So we have to be really mindful of how we actually live our lives and how we can actually do it more sustainably. So the cool thing about gardens is that it's got some beautiful flowers that not only look pretty, but as we were talking about before, they bring lots of bees to the garden and pollinators. So I, what I love about the garden is all the different textures and um, shapes and smells. So it's actually like an absolute adventure every time I go outside my door because I never know what I'm going to see. So there's some more pretty flowers there. That's a flower called calendula, and that's really good for the garden. Um, but then you've got some kind of spiky plants as well that are succulents. So there's all different kind of, you know, shapes and, and textures in the garden, which is what I love. And then you might get, you know, parsley is fantastic. It's really good for your breath. We call it nature's toothpaste. Oh. That's really yummy to eat. So there's edibles, there's flowers, there's succulents. We were talking before about how bees love uh, purple and blue flowers. So there's some flowers from some comfrey, which is really important for your compost system. And then we've got delicious mint and it's such a beautiful time of year for mint and it smells so, so fresh and great to put in a recipe, isn't it? And then you've got some feathery things as well. And this is a sort of a fennel that's in my backyard and they can be sort of all feathery as well. And when they move in the, in the wind, they have really, they send little messages, I reckon. Mm. So there's beautiful things that you can see in the garden every time you step out the door. And I think it's a beautiful thing to be doing gardening. Now, what's this plant telling me? Anyone know? It's outstayed, it's welcome. It needs to come out of its pot. Look at those roots. It really needs to be replanted. So this is some um, silver beet. So all you have to do when you're gonna replant 
some seedling is take it out of the pot and look at that root structure. Look at all those healthy roots, but you can see that they're all confined and balled up there. They're wanting to go into the soil. So we'll put those in the soil today for sure. And it's really simple to replant some seedlings is you just tease it apart very gently. And then what you'll find is you've got this beautiful root system that's absolutely ready to go into the soil. So I've just made a little example of a pot here. So you could pop this that into the garden like that. But you'll see here, what's this? This is a, a um, blueberry packet from some blueberries that I bought from the supermarket a long time ago and I've kept them because what they can do is you can pl um, plant seeds in them. So pretty simple because they've already got holes in the bottom. You can pretty much plant anything in any um, container as long as it's got holes in it for drainage because we need the water to come out. So, and the other thing is, is that you can pop the little lid in at night so it becomes a little humidity crib and creates a little bit of temperature in that little pot as well. So there's heaps of things you can do. You can plant things in things as simple as toilet roll holders. And I reckon all of you have got those at home. I'm pretty sure you can just scrunch up a little bit of newspaper and put in the bottom and you can plant a seed in there. You can, Lou, you go. Lou, can I ask yeah. a question? You sure can. With your, um, the strawberry container. Yeah. Do you leave that inside? Cause I tried that and left it outside and it all dried up too quickly. Ah, uh, did it? Yep. Yeah. You might've kept be better to put it in the shade so it wasn't so sunny. Yeah. Yeah, that was and just keep fun. the water up every day. It's hard to remember when we've got yes. busy lives, but it yeah, no, no keep worries. that water up. <laughs> no worries. Um, I, I tend to leave mine on my kitchen sink so that when I see them, I remember to water them. It's a great visual reminder. That's just a little um, um, milk container that I've cut um, the top out of and also pop some holes in the bottom. So that's right to go to plant some seedlings in as well. The other thing we do is we recycle plants. Does anyone here actually grow from seed cutting, from, um, from um, food cuttings that you have in that might be going out to the um, compost heap? What you can do with this one is just cut the top off and put that into the ground. But I put it in a bit of water beside the tap so that it grows some roots ready to go back into the ground. As soon as you see an onion doing something like that, you can actually pop that in the ground and it will regrow. Wow. Bottom of spring onions, you can do the same. So you can recycle food as well. So we always like to say food is free. So food is, it is possible to get free food. Um, so we'll just pop some little beans here. Look at these colorful beans that I've got. And for the parents and carers, I normally wouldn't plant beans. I'm just, I'm choosing a big seed so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, but I will pop those into the soil just plant those like that, yeah. tuck them in, put some dirt on top, give it a spray and you'll spray every day and water it every day and you'll soon have some little seedlings growing and then you can put those into the garden. Mm. So there's heaps of ways you can actually recycle um, and, and save the planet. I use a lot of um, yogurt containers and margarine containers and just cut them up and make plant IDs. Or you can do things like using some um, popsicle sticks for plant IDs, um, some cutlery that you might have from the picnic leftover so that you use those up. There's amazing ways in which you can um, recycle. If you, if you like me in a crazy seed saver, you can use jars to save all of your seeds as well. So there's heaps of ways in which you can save the planet and looking after yourself and um, your family by growing lots of food for free. So there's some other examples of how you guys might be able to get, you know, on a rainy day, some ideas, have a look around your house, look in the pantry and see which ways um, mm. you can recycle some of these items and grow your own food. Mm. Good. I reckon Good. I've got an old pair of boots at home. Lou, have you got any ideas for what we could do with those? Honey, you should say that, Morse. <laughs> oh. An example of things that you can grow crazy things in. So that's an old boot of mine. Uh -huh. And that's I, amazing like, now i know what to do with them yeah because <laughs> they've already got training holes in them because the shoes <laughs> were so old so that's a great example I, I grow things in teapots i grow things yeah. in teacups as long as there's holes in the bottom you'll yeah. be right so there's the possibilities are endless yeah gotta use your imagination yeah. love it thank you and lou with your um the beans just a question 
like is it just once they start shooting that you can then put them in the gun or do you wait till that like to a certain size or usually with um seedlings you leave it so that it gets to the five leaf stage okay. um, so an example of that i've got some chili here where if that had five leaves that would yeah. be a good time to plant it that one's got four leaves i might wait for one more leaf to grow okay the other way you can tell is when they start, as I said before, the the, seed, the roots start coming out of the bottom of the pot. They're pretty much yeah. ready to go when it's yeah. like that. But this time of year, you can grow all sorts of food because the soil is warming up. So you pretty much have, an, there's an endless list of things that you can grow. That's great, Lo. And growing your own food's the best because it doesn't, the taste doesn't compare to what you eat from the supermarket. So yeah, yeah. and it's right. fun. And there's lots of other things that are in the garden too. We've talked about worms and bees. And so we've got lots of soil and plants. There's certain bugs and beetles out there that also like to eat them. Has anyone looked in the garden and found lots of little bugs and beetles and creepy crawlies? Have you, Archie, Ollie and Poppy? Oh, and Charlie? Yes. All right, let's see. I'm going to see if you can play a little guessing game. I'm thinking of, yes, a little, little bug that, a little creepy crawly that creeps and creeps like this. He builds a cocoon and when he comes out of the cocoon, he's a beautiful butterfly. What do you think that could be? Does anybody want to take their microphone off and tell me what you think that might be? Shelley, what, what comes out of cocoon? What's, what's caterpillar? Caterpillar, <gasps> good girl. Well done. That is great. Fantastic. Well done. All right, I'm thinking of another one now. Oh, it's green. It likes it likes to hop. That's great, Billy. Oh, and it likes the grass. In fact, a little bit of its name start. Oh, it actually has grass in its name, and it likes to hop. Hop, hop, hop. What has Anybody grass? know? Archie, Ollie, Poppy, and Charlie, do you want to have a little go? Do you think you might know what that is? Like a kangaroo, is it? Oh, a little bit like a kangaroo, but a little bit smaller than a kangaroo. What hops in the garden? And it's green, you it's said, Lloyd. Kangaroos hop. It's not a kangaroo. It's green and it's little. Green. Really tiny. It is green. I don't know what's green. Grass. Grass hopper. Hi. Grass hopper. Let's have a look. Grasshopper. There it is, a grasshopper. Let's do large grasshoppers. Let's do one more. This one is, oh, let me have a look. Ooh, this is a little interesting one. It's a little bit slimy like that worm, but it has a special shell on its back. It's a special house and it likes to crawl inside and then it pops its head out. What do you think that one could be? Abby, any ideas? Hmm. Anyone want to have a go with that one? Oh, I think Abby's going to have Abby. a go. Is that a snail? Snail? Do you think it's a snail, Abby? Will we have a look? Let's have a look. <gasps> Yeah, like, no. <coughs> Do you think they could be fast, Abby, or really slow? Are they fast or slow? I'm going to guess for her and say slow. Oh, Bray, give your that yeah. on the back. You are right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we might sing a little song about some of these bugs and beetles and creepy crawlies. We might do four. Here we go. Are you able to do some of these movements? Do you think you can creep? We're going to creep out to the garden today. Can you creep? Can you tiptoe? And then we're going to touch some of our body parts. So here we go. 
We've got bugs and beetles in our garden. Oh, what horror, oh, what dread. Four hungry beetles eating our cabbages. Soon our cabbages will be gone. So I go out to the garden. Tiptoe, tiptoe, tread. I creep up behind the beetle and I tap one on the... What will we tap them on? Oh, Moise has got a good idea. On the head. Good one, Moise. Oh, how many... Like, we, we, we just sort of shoot it away, didn't we? Yeah, okay. <laughs> because how many have we got left now? One, two, three. Are you ready? Here we go. Bugs and beetles in my garden. Oh, what horror. Oh, what dread. Three hungry beetles in my cabbages. Soon my cabbages will be gone. So I go out to the garden. Tip Softly tiptoe tread. I creep up behind those beetles and I touch one on the where this time? Nose. Oh, how many left now? Oh, one, two. Two hungry beetles in my garden. Oh, what horror. Oh, what dread. Two hungry beetles eating my cabbages. Soon my cabbages will be gone. So I go out to my garden. Tiptoe softly, tiptoe tread. I creep up behind those beetles and I touch one on the... We've had the nose. What about the... Toes! Oh, we've got one left. This might be Moses' favourite, a little, little beetle here. <gasps> Bugs and beetles in my garden. No, what horror, oh, what dread. Oh, one hungry beetle in my garden. Soon my cabbages will be gone. So I go out to my garden, tiptoe softly, tiptoe tread. I sneak up behind that beetle and I tap, tap him on the, where? On his tummy. Oh, ah, uh, is what it said. Oh, I don't want to go today. Look where we found him. One, two, three, four, they're back and now they're in the lettuces. Ah. Oh. Oh, dear me. Lou, you had a gorgeous little beetle there. Yeah, and he's got a mate. So there's one, two little beetles. And did you know that there's some good bugs and bad bugs? So you can tell them about us, Lou. Well, some of the bad bugs, it's easy to get rid of them. Grab one of these, fill it up to the top with water, put a teaspoon of Vegemite in it, Give it a good shake and off you go and spray your garden. Ah. Simple as that. There's lots of really easy natural remedies to get rid of the nasty bugs. Wow. Another one is if you put some chilli into the water, same, same amount, some chilli, and also a little drip of um, dishwashing detergent, and then that enables it to cling on to the leaves, the dishwashing detergent. Give it a shake and away you go in the garden again. So you don't have to put chemicals in the garden. You can use some really natural things that you've just got in the house anyway in your pantry. Get on that's top of those. Great idea. Because they're out and about this time of year, that's for sure, with all the growth and all the sunshine suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. Moz, do you have bugs in your garden? I do have a few bugs in my garden here, there and everywhere. And the aphids seem to really love my roses. Yep. <sighs> but I want to try Vegemite. Yeah. Next time I'm going to put Vegemite on my toast, I'll share it with my roses as well. <laughs> and Abby is saying that she uses peppermint for ants. That's brilliant. Absolutely. Peppermint. Yep. Great. There you go. Great tip. So there's lots of things. Yeah. I think Louise might have a story for us that might have a few. I do. Are you ready for a story? Okay. They're great ideas, Lou. I'm going to try those. Yeah. Didn't know Absolutely. about the Vegemite and like Morza, I've got roses. <laughs> 
this this story we're going to find more bugs and beetles and creepy crawlies some of the ones I think we've all we've sung about today and this is by Helen Milfroy and she's one of our Australian Indigenous authors and she's from the Pilbari region let's have a look beautiful beautiful illustrations or pictures here we go backyard bugs I watch an ant march up the tree Moore's a son about about an ant. She had them marching away, didn't she? She's still marching. While dragonfly flits close to me. Oh, we haven't had a dragonfly. The earthworm wiggles in the sand. Lou told us lots and lots about those. As beetle trips across the land. Chop, chip, chop. A cricket chirps his happy song. Rip, rip, rip. And a honeybee buzz, buzz, buzzes along. Back to the hive. Caterpillar turns to a butterfly. Look, we've got the caterpillar. What's this, do you think? I think we talked about those before, didn't we? And then it turns into a beautiful butterfly. <gasps> While a spider hangs against the sky. Wincy, wincy spider climbed up the water spout. And snail and slug slip slide on the leaves. There he is. There's his house. We have sung about lots of these today. Then Ladybird lands upon my sleeve. I have to say, I think they're one of my favourites too. In my backyard, there's lots to see. I love the bugs that live near me. There they are there. Have you seen some of those bugs in your garden? Have you seen some of those moors and loo in your garden? Absolutely. <laughs> and some of them even have special little ears like this. Can you see these? Some beetles and bugs in your garden have these. Can you put your fingers up and do that too? Now, I've got a little song. Well, it's really a story, but it's a song story. And that's about a little creature called Alexander Beetle. And this song was my most favourite, favourite song when I was little. I really don't do it a lot of justice, but I love singing it because it's a really good story. And I've done, it's a very long song, so I've had to cut out little bits of it, but I think you'll get the idea. Are you ready? I found a little beetle. So that beetle was his name. And I called him Alexander. And he answered just the same. I put him in a matchbox and kept him all the day. And Nanny let my beetle out. She went and let my beetle out. And beetle ran away. So Beetle's gone. She said that she was sorry and I really mustn't mind and there's lots and lots of Beetles that she's certain we could find. If we looked about the garden in holes where Beetles hide and we'd get another batch, matchbox and my Beetle on the lid. We went to all the places that a beetle might be near and we made the sort of noises that a beetle likes to hear. Who knows what sort of noises a beetle likes to hear? They like noises like this. Can you make noises like that? If we make lots of those noises, hopefully Alexander will hear us. And I saw a kind of something 
And I gave a sort of shout, a beetle house, an Alexander beetle coming out. It was Alexander beetle, I'm as certain as can be. And he had a sort of look as though he knew it would be me. And he had a sort of look as though he thought he ought to say, I'm very, very sorry that I tried to run away. Oh, I'm glad he came back, Moors. He did. He came back. And the really good thing is Nanny's now written Alexander across the lid of the matchbox. So it'll never, ever happen again. And I love my Alexander. It's a great idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. That's another good recycling tip, actually. It is. <laughs> it is. Lots of recycling tips. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so happy that that had a happy ending. I am too. Because <laughs> I was very devastated. It's a beautiful song. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, gang, we might have come to the end of our great gardening adventures and we just wanted to thank you all so very much for coming along and saying, spending the morning with us, having gardening adventures. And I just wanted to remind you all how important it is to eat healthy food and for us to look after the planet because good food means that we're in good moods and that the planet is looked after and it's all our responsibility to look after each other and the planet. So a really big thing about Food is Free, if you've not heard about us, we're from, um, we're in Ballarat, if you're not actually located in Ballarat yourself. And what we do is we suddenly go out to our backyards and say, gosh, I've got a lemon tree and I've got so many lemons. I can't eat them all. I'm going to share them with my neighbours. So seven years ago, we started up a couple of food security platforms. First one is beside my house here in Ripon Street in Ballarat. And people, gardeners, come along and they go, I've got extra tomatoes. Here you go. I'm going to put some extra tomatoes in your basket. And then someone from my neighbourhood comes along and takes them and puts them in their sandwiches or eats them in different meals. So we encourage people to share their spares. And that's exactly what we do. And we're all about food security education and trying to get people to um, do less food waste as well. So we have lots of workshops. We haven't been able to deliver them for a whole year or more now. Um, so we're looking forward next year to doing lots more um, gardening and especially kids gardening because we love kids gardening. Hi, I can see you waving. <laughs> Everyone want to have a wave at the camera? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> so what we encourage also people to do is follow us on social media. So we've got uh, Food is Free Laneway, which is on Instagram and Facebook, or you can go to www.foodisfree.com.au and you can sign up to our newsletter as well and find out all about the great activities that we'll have coming up. My favourite thing to do is Little Sprout. So I know that we're going to have lots and lots of in-person and maybe some online too. Um, yeah. But mostly in person, so now that we can gather again and we can show you the worm farms in, in person and we can all get together and hang out and do some planting and actually get our hands in the soil yeah. together rather than on the camera. So the other thing we encourage people to do is if you're not from Ballarat or you just have extra food, why not just put a little food as free on your letterbox? Even if you just leave a carrot on the letterbox or a zucchini, and share it with your neighbours. Just put hashtag food is free and people will understand. Or you could take a little basket of apples down to your local bus shelter or places like that where you know people gather and hang out and they might be hungry and wanting some food as well. Yeah. So that's what we do at Food is Free. Um, we won't keep you for much longer, but we do want to thank you so very much for hanging out with us. Hopefully you've learned a lot about nature, lots of beetles and bugs and worms and fun things like that and you know the importance of eating good food and also growing your own food isn't that hard and it's a great activity to do i think we're all so excited to get outdoors again i hope to see lots of people actually gardening over the summer period and um thank you so much to playgroup vic and also the victorian government for funding uh this morning. happy children's week Anyone want to make any comments or share anything that they've observed in their garden this week? Or any tips? Say that my neighbour, um, I don't use the food is free hashtag. They do put random things on their letterbox all the time. So yes, there's food, 
but there's often like random old bottles of water or a can of a can of spaghetti, I guess that's food. Um, but even matches, toys, just whatever. And it's it's not a huge amount of stuff, but they just put it in a box and it goes. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, people are doing it. That's beautiful. That's a really beautiful thing, Abby. And food is free as a worldwide movement. So lots of people actually do it. Um, yeah. So yeah. But we have about 100 yeah. visitors a day. So we know how busy it can get and yeah. how many people are in need. We do have a special focus on disadvantage. So that's exactly what we're about. And we're more about teaching people to grow their own food rather than, you know, doing handouts. That's really yeah. what we like to focus on. Um, yeah. But we have a saying that no one's judged on what they bring or take as long as you leave with a smile. And that's what we're all about. And mostly it's about community connection and communities coming together as well. So it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everyone. I believe we've got a little song to send us out. Did you want to say anything else, Louise or Moores? I have to say I've learned learned a lot today. I've learned a lot too. In fact, I think I I don't even think I'll stay at work this afternoon. I'm getting out into my garden. Don't tell anyone. No. (laughs) Not I think we should all go back to the garden for sure because it's a really magical place. Yeah. It's great for your well-being. It's great to, you know, yeah. have a big stretch. I think that you do more sort of yoga poses in the garden without even realising and you do it yeah. for free. So yeah. it's an amazing activity to do with your family. And if you ever grow your own strawberries or tomatoes, you'll know that the taste doesn't compare. So yeah. from the start, Billy and Billy, yeah. come say goodbye. So get out there and get gardening because we love seeing families garden together. That's what it's all about. And growing food from a really young age means that you then learn where food comes from and how important it is to all of us. So did you want to lead the song, ladies? And thank you so much for being part of this morning. Yeah. Thanks so much, Lou. It's been a fantastic morning. Thank you. Abby, you might know this song. I think we're going to do our goodbye song. Are you ready? Here we go. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. It was good to see you here. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, Amanda. Bye. Bye. Belly, Billy, Max and Harriet, Abby. See you guys. Bye. Archie. Archie. Bye. 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 Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Fisher family. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Lou. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, good fun. Two Lou's. <laughs> 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 See you again. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Yay. Oh, that's <laughs>